श्री सचिदानंद सदगुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय सदगुरु भरद्वाज महाराज की जय श्री साई सचरित्र चैप्टर थर्टी थ्री ग्रेटनेस ऑफ ओदी स्कॉर्पियन स्ट्रिंग एंड प्लेग केसेस क्यूर जामनेर मिराकिल नारायण राव सिकनेस बाला बोआ सुतार अपा साहेब कुलकर्णी हरी बाबू कार्निक इन द लास्ट चैप्टर वी डिस्क्राइब द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ द गुरु नव इन दिस वी विल डिस्क्राइब द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ ओदी हव एवर बोथ आर इंटरलिंक द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ ओदी इज ड्यू टू द स्पिरिचुअल ग्रैंडर ऑफ बाबा प्रिलिमिनरी लेट एस नव बव बिफोर द ग्रेट सैंस देयर मेरसीफुल ग्लैंसेस विल डिस्ट्रॉय माउंटेन्स ऑफ सीन्स and they do away with all the blemishes of our character their talk gives us good techniques and confers on us invaluable happiness their mind do not know any difference such as this is ours and that is yours such differentiation never arises in their minds their debts obligations will never be repaid by us in this birth as well as in many future births udi it is well known that baba took dakshina from all and out of the amount thus collected he spent on charity and purchased fuel this fuel he kept in the duni the sacred fire which he kept over he kept ever burning the ash from this fire was called udi and it was freely distributed to the devotees at the time of their departure from shirdi what did baba teach by the sudhi baba taught by the sudhi that all the visible phenomena in the universe are the transient as the ash our bodies composed of matter of the five elements will fall down after all their enjoyments are over and be reduced to ashes in order to remained the devotees of the fact that their bodies will be reduced to ashes baba distributed udi to them baba also taught by the udi that the brahma is the only reality and the universe is f ephemeral and that no one in this world be he a son father or wife is really ours we come here in this world alone and we have to go from here alone it has be found that the woody cured many physical and mental maladies but baba wanted to repeat it the devotees ears the principles of uh, discrimination between the unreal and the real he taught non attachment for the unreal by his udi and dakshina the former taught as discrimination and the latter taught as non attachment unless we have these these things it is not possible for us to cross over the sea of the mundane existence so baba asked for dakshina and while the devotees took leave he gave udi as prasad they smeared some of it on their foreheads and placed his boon conferring hand on them when baba was in a cheerful mood he used to sing merrily one such song was uh, about udi the meaning of this song was oh playful ram come come and bring with you sacks of udi baba used to sing in very clear and tender tones so besides the spiritual implication of udi it had also its material significance it conferred health prosperity freedom from anxiety and many other worldly gains so the udi has helped us to gain both our ends material as well as spiritual we shall now begin with the stories about the udi scorpion sting Narayan Motiram Jani of Nashik was a devotee of Baba he was serving under another devotee of Baba by name Ramachandra Vaman Modak 
once he went to shirdi with his mother and saw baba then baba himself told her that her son should start independent business some days after this prophecy turned true narayan jani left service and started a boarding house anand ashram which thrived well once a friend of this narayan rao was struck by a scorpion and the pain caused by it was uh, severe and unbearable would be most efficacious in such cases it is to be applied on the point of pain and so narayan rao searched for it but found none then he stood before baba's picture and in invoked baba's aid chanted baba's name and taking out a pinch of the ashes of the jaw stick burning in front of baba's picture and thinking it as baba sudhi applied it on the seat of uh, pain and the sting as soon as he moved his fingers the pain vanished and both the persons were moved and felt delighted bubonic plague case once a devotee in bandra came to know that his daughter who was staying in another place was down with bubonic plague he had no udi with him so he sent word to nana saheb chandorkar to send the same nana saheb got this message en route the tana railway station when he was traveling with his wife to kalyan he had no udi with him then he therefore took up uh, some dust from the road meditated upon sai baba invoked his aid and applied it to his wife's forehead the devotee was uh, very glad to learn that his daughter who was suffering for 3 days began to improve from the very moment nana saheb invoked baba's aid near datana railway station the jomner miracle in the year 1904-05 nana saheb chandorkar was mamalta dar at jomner in the kondesh district which is more than 100 miles from shirdi his daughter mainatai was pregnant and was due to deliver her case was very serious and she was suffering from labor pains for the last 2 or 3 days nana saheb tried all remedies but in vain he then remembered baba and invoked his aid there in shirdi one ramgiri bua whom baba called bapu giri bua was leaving for his native place in kondesh baba called him and told him to stop at jomner on his way on his way home and give the udi and aarti to nana saheb ramgiri bua said that he had only 2 rupees with him and this moment was uh, barely su- uh, sufficient for the rail railway fare up to jalgaon and it was not possible for him to go from jalgaon to jamner a distance of about 30 miles baba assured him that he need not care as everything would be provided for the baba asked shama to write a well known aarti composed by madhav adkar aarti and translation of this is given at the end of this work and gave a copy of it with udi to ramgiri bua to be delivered to nana saheb then relying on baba's words ramgiri bua left shirdi and reached jalgaon at about 2:45 am he had only two anas left with him and he was in a plight to his great relief he heard somebody calling out who is bapugiri bua of shirdi he went to him and told him that he was bapugiri bua then the person professing to be sent by nana saheb took him to an excellent tanga with a good pair of horses then both drove in it the tanga ran fast and early in the morning they came to a brooklet the man took the horses for watering them and he asked ramgiri bua to partake of some eatables on seeing the bread most track uh, on seeing the beard most track 
and the livery of that person ramagirbua suspected him to be a muslim and was unwilling to take my uh, to take any refreshments from him but he satisfied ramagirbua by saying that he was a hindu a kshatriya of garwal and that nana sahib had sent these refreshments and there should be no difficulty in its acceptance then both of them took the refreshments and started again they reached jamnere at dawn ramgirbu ramgirbu alighted to attend a call of nature and returned within a few minutes but no found that there was no tanga and no driver he was dumbfounded then he went to the neighboring kacheri and on making inquiries learned that the mamaltadar was at home he went to nana sahib's house and gave to nana sahib baba's woody and aarti yet this time mainta's case was in the most serious condition and all were in deep anxiety about her nana sahib called out his wife and asked her to give the woody mixed with water to 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 their daughter to drink he thought that baba's help was most opportune in a few minutes few minutes came the news that the delivery was safe and that the crisis had passed away when ramgiribua thanked nana sahib for the peon tanga and the refreshments etc the latter was greatly surprised as he had sent none to the station and was not aware of any person coming from shirdi mr b v dev aftana retired mamaltadar made enquiries about this matter with bapurav Chand- chandorkar son of nana sahib and ramgirbu of shirdi and after satisfying himself wrote an elaborate article part prose and part poetry in the sri sai lila magazine b v narsimha narsimha swami has also taken down the statements of uh, mainatai bapu sahib chandorkar uh, ramgirbua uh, dated 1st june 1936 16th september 1936 and 1st december 1936 respectively and published them in the in his uh, devotees experiences part 3 the following is quoted from ramgirbua's statement one day baba called me to him and gave me a packet of woody and a copy of baba sarathi i had to go to kondesh at that time baba directed me to go to the jamnair and told me to deliver the aarathi and woody to nana sahib chandorkar at jamnair i said to baba that all i had was 2 rupees and asked him how that could take me by train from kopargan to jalgaon and next from jalgaon to jamnair baba said god will give that was a f- friday and i started at once i reached manmad at 7:30 pm and jalgaon at 2:45 am at that time plague regulations were in force and i had much trouble i was to discover what i should do to get to jamnair at about 3 am a peon in boots turban and equipped with other details of good dress came to me and took me to a tanga and drove me on on the way at bagur i took refreshments we reached jamnair early in the morning and by the time i attended call of nature the tanga and its driver had disappeared narayan rao bhakta narayan rao father's name and surname are not given had the good fortune to see baba twice during the latter's lifetime 3 years after the passing away of baba in 1918 he wanted to come to shirdi but could not within a year of baba's maha samadhi he fell sick and suffered much all possible remedies gave him no relief 
so he meditated on baba day and night one night he had a vision baba came through a cellar comforted him saying don't be anxious you will be improve from tomorrow and within a week you will be on your legs narayan rao got perfectly well within a, within the time indicated in the vision now the point for consideration is this was baba living because he had the body or was he dead because he left it no baba is ever alive for he transcends both life and death he who loved him whole heartedly gets response from him at any time and at any place he is always by our side and will take any form appear before the devote bhakta and satisfy him appa sahib kulkarni in 1917 appa sahib kulkarni was transferred to tana and began to worship baba's picture presented by him by bala sahib bhute bala sahib bate in real earnest he did the worship he offered flowers sandal paste and naivedya daily to baba in the picture he longed intently to see him in this connection it may be remarked that seeing baba's picture earnestly is equivalent to seeing him in person the following story illustrates this statement bala bawa sutar a saint of mumbai named bala bawa sutar who on account of his piety devotion and the style of called modern tukaram came to shirdi for the first time in 1917 when he bowed before baba the latter said i have known this man for 4 years bala bawa wondered and thought how could that be as that was his first trip to shirdi but thinking about it seriously he recollected that he had prostrated himself 4 years ago before baba's portrait at mumbai and was convinced about the significance of baba's words he said to himself how omniscient and all pervading are the saints and how kind how kind are they to their devotees i merely bowed to his photo but this fact was noticed by baba and in due time he made me realize that seeing his photo is equivalent to seeing him in person now we return to appa sahib story while he was in tana he had to go on tour to bivandi and was expected to return after a week in his absence the following wonderful thing took place on the third day at noon a fakir turned up at his at appa sahib's house his features resembled exactly those of uh, baba's photo mrs kulkarni and the children all asked him whether he was sai baba of shirdi he said no but that he was an obedient servant of his and came there at his order to enquire after the well being of the family then he asked for dakshana the lady gave him a rupee he gave her a small packet of oodi and asked her to keep this in the shrine then he left the house and went away now hear the wonderful leela of sai appa saheb could not proceed with his tour as his horse fell sick at bivandi he returned home that afternoon and learnt from his wife about fakir's visit he got very restless yes he did not have the darshan of the fakir moreover he did not liked that only 1 rupee was paid to him as dakshana he said that had he been present he would have paid not less than 10 rupees then he immediately started to quest of the fakir and searched for him in the masjid and other places without taking any food his search was in vain he then returned home and took his food the readers may remember here baba's dictum in chapter 32 that god's quest should not be made on any empty belly 
then after meals he went out for a walk with a friend mr chitre after after going some distance they saw a man approaching them rapidly appa saheb thought that he must be the fakir that came to his house at noon as his features tallied with those of baba in the photo the fakir immediately put forth his hand and asked for dakshina appa saheb gave him a rupee he demanded again and again and so appa saheb gave him two more still he was not satisfied then he borrowed 3 rupees from mr chitre and gave them to him he wanted still more appa saheb asked him to accompany him to his house to his home then they all returned home and appa saheb gave him 3 rupees in all nine he looked unsatisfied and demanded again then appa saheb told him that he had a currency note of 10 rupees the fakir asked for the same took it and returned a 9 rupees and went away appa saheb had earlier said that he would pay 10 rupees and that sum was taken from him and 9 rupees consecrated by baba stretch were returned to him the figure 9 is significant it denotes the nine types of devotion void chapter 21 it may also be noted here that baba gave nine coins to one lakshmi bai shinde at his last moment appa saheb examined the woody packet and found that it contained some flower leaves and akshata then some time afterwards he got a hair from baba when he saw him at shirdi he put the woody packet and the hair in a tabij and wore it always on his arm appa saheb realized the power of the woody though he was very efficient he got 40 rupees as pay in the beginning but after he secured baba's photo and his woody he got many times more and also got much power and influence and along with these temporal benefits his spiritual progress was also rapid so those who are fortunate enough to get baba's woody should after bath apply it on the forehead and take some of it mixed with water as holy teerd hari bahu karnik in 1917 hari bahu karnik of dahanu came to shirdi on the guru purnima day and worshiped baba with all formalities he offered clothes and dakshina and after taking baba's leave got down the steps of the masjid then he thought that he should offer one more rupee to baba and was just turning to climb up again when shama signaled him by gesture that as he had got baba's leave he should go and not return so he started for home on the on his way when he went into the temple of kalaram at nasik for darshan the saint nursing maharaj who used to sit inside the temple came to hari bahu caught him by his wrist and said give me my 1 rupee karnik was surprised he paid the rupee most willingly and thought that sai baba recovered the rupee which he intended in his mind to give through saint nursing Mah- nursing maharaj this story illustrates the fact that all saints are one and illustrates how they work in unison bow to sri sai peace be to all